All right, everyone. Welcome back to Sylvan Librarians after our however long hiatus it's been. Extended hiatus. Um, today we're going to talk about Modern Horizons 3 because that's what everyone's talking about and we got to jump on that train. But it's also a really good set, just like to be clear. We could have talked about Thunder Junction or uh, Karlov Manor, but th this one I'm actually genuinely a little bit excited about, um, whereas the other two, not not so much so no, i feel yeah. i feel the same i feel like that's why we didn't talk about those because i didn't really care about any of those cards like thunder junction was okay karlov manor was kind of butt actually <laughs> yeah i wasn't the biggest fan but modern horizons yeah. 3 has has bangers yeah um, this is a this is a very good set we're we're not gonna cover in this video at least we're doing the best like we like cards we like the most from the set that like would go on your 99 and we're not going to talk about the the flares you know the free cycle um yeah and some of like the it's also not necessarily a best cards for the 99 these are just ones that stuck out to us that we like like obviously the flares like necro dominance birthing ritual like they're obviously really good but that's not where we're going to be putting our focus because you've already heard about those yeah, and to start that, I'm going to prove it here with an uncommon from the set. It is Waterlogged Teachings for three and then Hybrid Demir, so blue or black. For an instant, that's a search your library for an instant card or a card with flash, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. And then on the back, it's a it's an MDFC. It's a Demir land. Now, Kyle, you know how much I actually do not like the MDFCs. Wait... Yes, I understand how much you don't like the MDFCs. Does does Thorical have flash? Uh, no. You're okay, making, you're making okay, me question. Perfect. I don't. I don't think so. Does it, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know. The only deck I have Thorical in is my CDH deck, and I don't play that deck very often. Okay, okay. It doesn't have flash. Okay. I thought that it did, and I was going to be upset about this card. <laughs> No, well, this only, yeah, this searches for instance or flash. So you may be wondering why this card, right? It's four, four mana, doesn't tutor anything you want. But it is instant speed. And in casual commander, which we are mainly, you see a lot of, um, uh, what's the one from Strixhaven? The, uh, the, the tutor that tutors an instant or sorcery. I'll put it up on the screen here. But it's two and a blue. It's two and a blue. Look for an instant or sorcery. Put it in your hand. So this costs yeah. one more, but it is instant speed. And it's a Demir Tapland on the back, which I like a lot more than the old MDFCs from like, uh, was that Zendikar? The yeah. Old Zendikar set. Or the original, or originally debuted in Zendikar. Like the only one I really liked from that was Balagate Recovery. And it actually took me a little bit to get on board with that card. But like, I don't yeah. like MDFCs. But this one, I actually think I would run in a Demir deck. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just solidly good. It's like I say, I, I was really worried with it being Demir. I thought that Thassa's Oracle had Flash, and so I'm like, oh, cool. You got Demir, you got Search for Flash. This is just going to be degenerate, but it does. So we're, we're, we're okay on that front. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, just basic, uncommon tutor. But is a land on the back, so... What's the land on the back? Is it just ETB taps Demir? Yeah, taps for blue or black. Okay, that's not, yeah, that's fine. Like, it's not bad. I don't really care for the ones that are monocolored on the back because they're just worse than a basic. Yeah, and like, well, and then the spell side, like, is always overcosted. Like, this is an overcosted yeah. spell, but because it taps for blue or black, I think I like it more for that reason. It's also, it's also a tutor, which is like, if you. If there's any spell slot that you should be okay running a little bit overcosted on its tutors, because like, yes, you can run one mana black tutors, but like it's, it, you know, you're you're really power creep in your deck. It starts to look not casual, you know, if every one of your decks has like, you know, vampiric tutor in it. So I think that a, a good way to power balance and sandbag your deck a little bit to make it more casual is running tutors that are a little more overcosted. also the tutor i was thinking of is solve the equation i remembered it ah but yes. yeah so it's just a one extra cost solve the equation that doesn't get sorceries but like with commander we play at instant speed so much now right 
which it is kind of a lot of mana to hold up for, you know, but I mean, if you've got some kind of, you know, instant speed win that you're going to tutor for on your end step, then it's fine. Well, yeah, and it, it, it'll work well. and Demir is a control color combo, so a lot of people just keep mad. It's it's a draw past turn or draw past right, kind of right. deck color. So I feel like it would fit okay in the like, you know, you can't afford the expensive tutors. Um, right. So you can run this instead, and I feel like that's okay. Yeah. Um. So my first one on the 99 list is Crabomination. So I didn't see this one. This, this one, I, I like this one. Um, It kind of reminds me of, uh, oh, what is it called? Uh, Combustible Gear Hulk. Um, okay. Which I think, I think you'll see why here. In I, I know Combustible um, Gear Hulk. So it's four black black for a five, five crab demon. And it has Emerge from Artifact for 5 black black. Um, so you can reduce its cost by sacrificing an artifact. Or you can just pay 4 black black. And it has, when it enters the battlefield, target opponent exiles the top card of their library, a card at random from their graveyard, and a card at random from their hand. You may cast a spell from among the cards exiled this way without paying its mana cost. Um, Hold on. You're exiling I, from anyone's hand or, or anyone's stuff or just your any, stuff? Any opponents. Any opponents. Yeah, you have to choose, okay. choose an opponent. They exile the top card of their library, a random card from their graveyard, and a random card from their hand. Interesting. And you can cast one of the spells uh, exiled this way without paying its mana cost. Okay. Um, so the reason that I like it, and the reason it kind of reminds me of uh, um, of Combustible Gear Hulk is because this seems like something you would do over and over. Like, this seems like a good include in, like, a graveyard deck. Um, if you're only going to get it once then it's not so good, you know, for for black black for a 5/5 five, five that doesn't do anything after the first time it comes down is just eh it's, it, it's a body, I guess. Um but since it's mono black, like you could easily run this in a graveyard deck, you put this in like a chain or dementia master deck. Um that's a, that actually be amazing you know, if you can be casting this for, you know, three black pips every turn. Um you're just going to be generating an insane amount of value cuz you, know, you could potentially, you know, be hitting a six or a seven drop out of somebody's hand or off the top of their library or what have you. And I, I just think it's really solid. Also, it's a giant crab demon. I think this is the first crab demon in magic. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan. It, uh, it reminds me of, I don't, you haven't played another crab's treasure, but the crab souls game, uh, -huh. there's a place that you go in like between cities and like the lands and whatnot. And if you walk off the path, this giant crab, boss comes out of nowhere out of the sand and chases you around that's what this is reminding <laughs> me of and the, the other thing and i don't know this might be something that somebody cares about i don't but the emerge from artifact i think is interesting because historically black hasn't had anything to do with artifacts until they came out with those warhammer necron precons yeah um and then we started to see some black artifact synergies um which i think is honestly fine um, they're just kind of taking the color space that red used to occupy with things like, uh, you know, uh, Megatog or uh, things like that. Uh, oh, what's the other one? B Bosch Iron Golem. They're kind of taking like the similar design space that red used to occupy with the artifacts and they're just kind of giving it to black, which I think is fine. Because it wasn't like a crazy broken mechanic when it was common in red. Um, so I don't really think it's going to be that broken except for in the Necron precon where it is actually rather broken, but yeah, that yeah, deck I, is kind of crazy. Yeah, it kind of is, but that's not so much with the black artifact. It's just that, that it's just a pretty crazy deck. Yeah. I, I like, I like big scary crab man. And it's you, you pay with any, like anything as if it's any color, right? Uh, you, you get to pay play the cards you exile without paying its mana cost, or uh, one of them. One of them. The other ones remain in exile. Okay, I didn't know if you got to cast the other. Sorry, I pulled the card away. No, no, no. Um, yeah, it's a yeah, cast a spell from among cards exiled this way without paying its mana cost. Okay, so no lands, which is okay, I guess. No lands. Yeah, it's like it'd be better if it was lands, but eh, you know. Yeah, maybe this is something I throw in uh, Krav for fun because <laughs> i mean i don't do a ton of recursion in there because it's a lot it's a mono black token deck but yeah i can i think it'd be really fun in like a demir deck um you know where you're, you're you know making, you know where you put it 
You know, you put it. Where's that? Moldrotha. Yeah, no, this would be crazy fun in Moldrotha. Yeah, uh, once a turn, play that thing. No, guys, it's, it's a little, it's a little bit harder with Moldrotha just because it is a six cost, so that's gonna, you know, take up quite a bit of resource. Yeah, but Moldrotha um, usually ramps out, so you can play like everything from your grave, like every type of thing from your graveyard every turn, because you're yeah, in this green. Is true. So, at least that's how I've seen Moldrotha played. Yeah. But, yeah, that's that's that that's my first one. I I like Big Crab Man. All right, we'll move to my second one. Now, one of the reasons I really like Modern Horizons Three is my colorless card. My my colorless cards are getting so much love. Like yeah, me and you have been talking about this for years. That colorless has just needed more. Wizards just doesn't love colorless, and then they just went and said, "All right, we hear you." Yeah. We can see it. Mark Rosewater. He he watches our channel. He, yeah. him and four other people. Like because <laughs> I I always wanted a colorless deck. And I and I finally built one with um, Liberator when it came out in Brothers War because that's the kind of thing I wanted. I didn't want to just build an Eldrazi colorless deck like everyone else. Now a lot of people right. do and run. Really, your only option prior to Liberator. Yeah, and a lot of people do run Liberator. Like I'm not special for running Liberator, but it is what yeah, I was. Man, you, it's what you I was waiting. A lot of options. Yeah, it's just what I was waiting for in a colorless commander. Yeah. Um. Anyway, the card I have is just a single colorless mana, one cost, instant. For Null Elemental Blast. To counter target multicolored spell or destroy uh, target multicolored permanent. Now, Kyle. Yeah. How much do you hate Wash Away? Um, a lot. Yeah. However, I would hate it less if it were colorless. Simply because that seems more fair. Well, that's what I'm saying. This, like, c commanders, like, yes, there are monocolored commanders, but how often. How how often is it that a commander isn't just one color? Like I feel like you get yeah, more. I mean, like it, it's extremely common to sit down at a table and you know see three other multicolored commanders, and you're running a multicolored commander. Like it's maybe like one in three tables where you have a mono color. Yeah, and that. So the reason I say this, I love wash away because no one's ever ready for like just wash awaying their commander. Um, Bull crap. <laughs> for those for those who don't know, Wash Away is a single blue instant that just says counter target spell that wasn't cast from its over owner's hand, but it has cleave, which is uh, cancel, so one blue blue, um, and you get to take away that the uh, clause that wasn't cast from their hand, such so as counter a spell. Um, but I run it just to counter commanders for a single blue. No one's ever ready for it, and now no. I can do that in colorless or just straight up destroy it. Yeah, I and I think that's honestly the better thing is like. Um, colorless one of the things that it struggles very hard with is removal um, and I mean there's a good reason for that like you know you don't want just everybody having access to great removal um, of any sort but you know it's been too restricted in the past to where you know you're trying to work with things like universal solvent which is just awful or like you know historically meteor golem was a big hitter um, There's those just aren't sufficient so in my Liberator deck, I'm going to pull up this real quick. I run Introduction to Annihilation as a removal spell. Do mm -hmm. you know what that is? I've never heard of it. <laughs> it's it's from Strixhaven. It's five mana, just five generic for a sorcery. It's a lesson, but that doesn't matter too much for us. Um, you exile target an online permanent, and its controller draws a card. That is the kind of removal that we had in colorless like single target otherwise you know we have like all this dust to get rid of you know all the colored stuff so we get to keep our colorless stuff right right well and there were there were big eldrazi titans that destroyed permanence when they came in but like you know you got to get to 11 and that's not removal that's incidental like <laughs> yeah and so introduction to annihilation is five mana exile something and the the person yeah. gets to draw a card like not only are you paying five mana but they are also getting a card out of it Right. Well, okay, that's that's only a little bit better than Universal Solvent. Yeah. Um, so this is nice because we're talking like, yeah, it hits commanders, but there are often times you have multicolored permanents on the field that are problems. Like an aura, right. if someone has an aura shards and they're just blowing up everything in your colorless deck, yeah. which is mostly artifacts, so they're just hosing you. Get rid of the aura shards. Lots, lots of yeah, stuff. I, I mean, and honestly, I think one of the other things that you're going to have to go into if you want to build a colorless deck is you might have to start building into more kind of staxy um 
strategies because even with this you still don't have a lot of options yeah. with your uh in color list so one option might just be to make it so that it's harder for them to get the threats out in the first place um but you can you can see to that yourself if you want to be the guy who you know brings a what's the new one winter moon <laughs> yeah winter moon yeah yeah it's a good card i think more people should run winter moon they should dude you got honestly there's not enough land punishment no listen you got you we have to start beating these five color people up they're they're just dominating and rolling over tables well and we have a wizards keeps running really good five color commander <laughs> i think this is important to note both of us started playing magic in commander yeah where land destruction touching lands is big no-no where in other formats it's like they don't really care like you do it whatever right. but like as we've been playing we've both just been like you gotta hose some of these people yeah well here's the thing i think armageddon too much because it also blows up your lands and that's no good um but you know like winter moon or, or blood moon or hey let me move on to my second one harbinger of the seas you wow know, did you like, did you like, see that segue did you see that segue i just rolled in on because harbinger of the seas is a merfolk wizard for one blue blue that just has the static effect of non-basic lands are islands so blood moon but blue which big fan gotta say we don't we don't see enough blood moon anymore people used to run it more you don't see any blood moon you don't see any magus of the moon bring them back bring them back and bring it bring in harbinger of the seas we gotta punish these people for running these ridiculous no basics land bases well, and, like, I won't name names, but I listen to lots of magic podcasts. And there are some specific <laughs> ones where they're talking in a monocolor deck. They're running, like, six basic lands. And I'm like, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. In a five-color deck, I understand running six basics, five basics, whatever. Because you kind of have yeah. to. But in a monocolor deck, you're running six basics and then running a bunch of, like, colorless... Um, uh, utility lands or you're running a lot of like enters tapped blue lands or like just some other non-basic bl blue right. sources and so people who play that way are going to get absolutely hosed by the winter moon like we were talking or if you have um your second card here just it is non-basic right non-basic lands or islands yeah non-basic lands or islands um could you imagine just t turning off someone's urborg cabal coffers combo yeah just it, yeah done <laughs> well also here's the thing too let's say that you put this in a mono blue deck say uh i don't know Gengataxis deck or something <laughs> your Urza. islands still work for counter spells so like most of their are like you know for these five color bases a lot of their lands don't work anyway but then your land still produce blue mana, which can be used to cast counter spells. So if you want to be that guy and just yeah. absolutely dominate the table, like it, it's it's way it's significantly better than Blood Moon, simply because blue is so much more interactive than red is. Yeah, it's. Um, I I think yeah. we won't see it very much. I don't think we will either because people are afraid of stacks and they shouldn't be. Unless uh, you want to, you want to win games, run stacks pieces. Unless you're playing against a stack deck, because stack decks do tend to have blue. Yeah. Um, I think that's the only place we'll see it. Yeah, like I mean, like in a stack deck, it's just bananas. Like say you play an Urza stacks or a Grand Arbiter. Yeah, Jenga Taxis. Like you, you, it just goes bananas in stacks. Yeah. It. Like, don't fear running the stacks pieces just because you're not running a stacks deck. Like, it's it's okay. It's it's okay to make it harder for other people to play the game. It is not cool to make it impossible for them to play the game. But, like, I mean, part of that is, you know, don't run so many non-basics, forehead. Uh <laughs> Yeah. There's a mosquito. There's a skeeter? Got it. I looked around like I was going to see it here it's gone okay anyway now i'm gonna segue real bad into my third card 
listen, you're not going to beat mine, so like you may as well just not, you know, not even try. But my third card is also a colorless card. If you can't tell, I'm excited about the colorless. Also, I need to give a quick shout out to Snow Covered Wastes in this set, which I may be purchasing. Uh, I didn't think we'd ever see a waste reprint. I genuinely thought Wizards would never do it. But we got Snow Covered Wastes now, so I'll take it. Uh, mostly because I think Snow is... I don't know if it's how popular it is in Modern, but I feel like every Modern Horizon set or something has had Snow it's it's got more of a thing in modern than it does in other in other places for sure but anyway my third card is glaring flesh raker for two and a colorless it is a creature eldrazi drone um two two whenever you cast a colorless spell you create a zero one colorless eldrazi spawn creature token with sack this creature add colorless and then whenever another colorless creature etbs under your control gla- glaring flesh raker deals one damage to each opponent so I'm in mad. in my colorless deck, every card I play, besides my lands, nets me essentially a treasure token. Oh, uh, yeah. Not only that, every time I create one, I'm pinging each opponent for one. Yeah, I could see how that could get relatively at like. It's not gonna. I don't feel like it's gonna dominate the board, but I feel like it's something you can put out there that people aren't going to realize how good it is until it's too late. No, it's gonna generate some good value. That's what I'm looking at. Is in my Liberator deck, throwing it in there, generating Eldrazi spawns, which I can use as bodies, which yeah. which is still nice because the deck is Liberator gives at your entire deck flash speed, so you can block, sack them before damage, and then just cast something if you want. Are they spawns or scions? Uh. Sp- Spawn. Sorry, I put my phone away. Um, I believe it's spawn. And that's all. Yeah, I'll draw. This colored man. I'll draw you spawn. Sack create a colorless. Weird colorless. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Scion is the one that creates a colored mana. You don't hardly see any of those though. I don't. I don't know. It's essentially treasure tokens from colorless decks because you don't. Right. Really need the colorless. Game. Yeah, the colors. Yeah, and unless you're unless you're running like the uh, you know like the old Eldrazi's that had colored pips but were like still devoid. Well, that's what the precon is. Right, that yeah, that's what the so, Ula Ulala Lek or whatever. I don't have it pulled up. Yeah. A five color deck that doesn't cost five colors and it's mana cost. That they said they'd stop doing. By the yeah, way, they, said they weren't gonna do this anymore. Wizards. Yes. <laughs> they lied. They Give lied. us Golos back. You, you had no reason to ban him if you're just gonna print new Golos. <laughs> Well, Golos was banned because he paid for his commander tax type deal, I think. Even though... Yeah, like... that's... There, there's another one they actually... Hold on, hold on. I saw one that pays for its commander tax. I think it's in one of the pre-cons. Um... Da, 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 da. It's right here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Uh, it's... Uh... Geo... Geodi Mo Gangshin. So it's a legendary creature. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, you create a 1-1 uh, forest dryad land creature token for each time you cast your commander from the command zone this game. Um, and then at the beginning of combat creatures, you control gain plus, plus X, where X is your commander's power. So, like, you know, that's, let's not pretend like we don't have things that also pay for their commander tax. This one, every time you cast it from the command zone, you get to make a dryad that counts as a land. Well, um, not only that, I think it's called, um, is it a triangular equation? Where, like, it goes from, you get one on your first cast, then two, and then three, and then you get four. So it, like, increases by yeah. one each time um yeah so it, yeah depending on how many times you've cast it so like like you still aren't gonna you still aren't gonna like completely pay for your commander tax but like it's a simic commander no so... you're, you're paying half your tax which is what golos yeah, also exactly did. golos got you a yeah. land every time so yeah let's not let's not pretend like wizards has learned from their design mistakes they in well fact actually have not actually no because the first time you cast it you get a land dryad without the commander tax right so it pays for half on your neck because then yeah. the next time you cast it it would cost two so it does pay for that half but then you end up with three after you oh, cast right. that so you're one. actually ahead by one yeah <laughs> so you fair yeah simic fair needed it yeah simic needed it it was yeah it was yeah 
Poor Simic. It's coming from someone who's pretty much... I, I, I feel like I've evolved from an Izzet player to more of a Simic player. You're you're something, how's that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like I started as an Izzet spell slinger, but now it's turned into just rampant card draw. In every yeah. color. In every color, not just Simic, but... Yeah, you manage to card draw like you're in blue, regardless of which color you're building into. <laughs> it's my favorite thing in the game, baby. It seems to be. So, my last pick is Abtrusti... Or Ab... Abtrus... Abstru... I, That's not a word. I believe... There's lots of things in magic that are made up words. Yeah, but that is like an adjective. It's a it's abstruse appropriation. Hold on. I yeah, I was going to say... I was going to say, let's find word. out if this is a real world. This is our English lesson for the day. Difficult to penetrate, incomprehensible to one of the ordinary understanding or knowledge. I'm also difficult to penetrate. <laughs> I'm sorry, children. <laughs> sorry, Mom. I know you don't listen to this, but sorry. Sorry, but yeah, no, I don't think... If she did, I don't think she'd make it this far into the episode. Uh, <laughs> what, what is what so, is this magic you guys are talking about? Now, now that we've gotten through the name, abstruse appropriation is an instant for two white black. It has devoid, and it has exile target non-land permanent. You may cast that card for as long as it remains exiled, and you may spend colorless mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell. So, in this day and age, four mana for a uh, single point removal, even if it's a non-land permanent spell, is a little steep. This is basically a Vindicate, I think. Vindicate is one, vindic one white black. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's an overcasted Vindicate, um, but it is Exile, and you do get access to that spell later on. So, like, you know, this is something that you would just use on real big beaters. Um, yeah, your, your, just, clo uh, your closer comparison would be Anguished Unmaking. This is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's lean anguish I'm making, but you actually get access to the spell. Yeah, you get to steal um, it. Yeah, which I think... I, I've been leaning more and more towards that kind of idea of magic building. Like, for example, I, and I'm going to make a I'm gonna make a TikTok video on kind of expanding on this a little bit, but I think that conditionally, forks can actually be better than counter spells. Um because like you can actually steal a win out from somebody's nose like let's say with a uh, torment of hailfire you can steal a win out from somebody's no nose with a fork because yours will resolve first whereas a counter spell it just goes to the graveyard um so like yeah i i, I am really starting to kind of lean into this idea of like taking someone's spell is better than just getting rid of said spell um, even if it costs you a little bit more mana, like I say, two white black, that is, that is a little bit steep for removal in this day and age, but I think it might, I think it might be worth it. I would, I would give it a consideration. Yeah, I, I feel like the one cost extra isn't actually that bad of a cost to just play it later. Right. Guess... Well, and it does give you access to mana of any color if it's from a colorless source. So like, obviously this is intended to be running a colorless um or at least a it would be a devoid deck, heavy deck. Yeah. yeah it'd be a devoid deck um which does that change color identity does devoid change color identity or does it just can change color no so dev so you can't run something with devoid in a colorless deck because the oh, okay. color identity still has the pip in it gotcha gotcha Yes, yeah, so I, I would I would still give it a give it a look. Cause like I mean, you've got soul rings, right? You've got thought vessels. Like there are things in your deck that are producing colorless mana. Um probably. If that's something that you really need. But also like, you know, it's just not that bad for exile target online permanent. If 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 that's the lowest that it goes for four, it's not bad. It's not the best, but it's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh did we we rated your third, didn't we? Yeah, that's that's the thing. Your camera froze like halfway through that, by the way. Oh, wonderful. Okay. I don't know if you can see but, it, but Yeah, I can see it jittering. I don't know why it's doing that. Right I can there, right? I don't know, but I can I can get some goofy things on your camera then or something. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's all. We're a bit rusty. <laughs> 
Oh, sorry. Were you ending it? I guess. Oh, like, do you have? I don't got. Do you I, have any follow up? Like, I, I got nothing. I got nothing else. I got nothing else. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Sylvan Librarians. We're a little rusty at the intro outro thing. We kind of lost our rhythm. That's what happens when you take like a six, seven month hiatus. But uh, <laughs> but we'll be back. We're working on it. We appreciate you for uh, for tuning in, and uh, we will catch you on the next one.